Hi, everyone. I've got an excellent speaker all the way from London with us today. His name is Paul Wakefield. So welcome to my Business by Design Summit. He is an internet marketing strategist and author. So welcome, Paul. How are you today? Yeah, hi. I'm really good, thank you. Really, really good. Thank you for having me on it. Uh, I'm really, uh, really excited about this. So yeah, thank you. You're welcome. More importantly, I love to always share from the heart, literally, where Paul's beginnings were, because most of us don't realize the humble beginnings we have when we first start off in a venture, because entrepreneurship is no joke. It's definitely not for the weak and timid. That's, so share us your story, that's please, for Paul. Sure. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, well, basically, I mean, it started off, like everyone else, you know, my whole life, I've, I've been in traditional um, corporate companies. My background is sales. Um, but I kind of fell into sales, and, and I try and keep this very, very short. Um, but literally, my last few years of school, I really struggled at school. All I wanted to do was play football, um, and I really struggled the last few years in regards to like reading and stuff like that. And then I got heavily bullied um, in the last few years of school. Um, I left school with no qualifications. Um, all as I said, all I wanted to do was be a footballer. I, when I left school, I actually wanted to be a fashion designer, um, and my amazing um, expert careers expert told me to go into engineering not quite sure how she kind of figured that out but that was the advice I, I done so I went into engineering um, after three and a half years of a five-year apprenticeship um, I was told I was dyslexic um, and this career isn't for you um, so I then spent three and a half years obviously doing something that I didn't want to do in the first place but also that really explained why I got bullied at school um, I really struggled to read books um, so yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare. So my whole career then led into uh, sales, and I had a fantastic career, eight-year career in sales, selling cars. I'm an ex-car salesman. Um, so it was an amazing career. I started off as a junior salesman, uh, earning five thousand pound a year. So that's probably I don't know about eight thousand dollars, something like that. Um, but I had a cool little company car, so you know I thought I was the mutts nuts driving around in my little company car. Um, but I was working, you know, seventy hours a week, six seven days a week, um, and it was yeah, it's mental. But I had a great career, and I learned loads in the motor trade. I learned how important customer service was. I learned how important qualifying your prospects were to make life easy. Um, I managed to, and I learned things about, you know, bundling packages together, upselling, downselling, all of that sort of thing, which at the time I completely took for granted. I was just a car salesman, but it was an amazing career. Um, Ten years ago, uh, I completely moved uh, location to where I to where I was from and to where I live now. Um, and eight years ago, I set up my first business. I set up as a consultant, as a sales and marketing consultant, just as a freelance guy. Uh, I set that business up uh, February, no, yeah, about March 2007. Um, and unfortunately, I had three members of staff, um, but then March 2008, I ended up closing that business. I made the three staff redundant, um, and it was awful. It was, it was terrible. Um, I'd split up with a fiance because of this, and I'm trying to keep this as short as possible, but I'd split up with a fiance, lost the house, usual kind of things. Um, and for the first time in my life, I was on the dull. Um, I was out of work, unemployed, and it was horrendous. The ex kept the house. Um, that seems to be the thing with the exes. They, they keep the houses. Um, so she kept the house, uh, bless her. And, uh, and I found myself in this really, really pokey little uh, flat, studio flat, um, I was, as I said, I was on a dole, 65 quid a week. Um, I had a leather sofa, which was my bed. It wasn't a sofa bed, it was just a bed, and that's what I slept on. Six months on the dole was a nightmare, and it was only one day I, I got talking to a guy who lived upstairs from me, and he was like, you know, what do you do, and, and everything else. So I tried explaining to him, I said, but the trouble, I don't want a job. You know, I said, I know I can make this whole business thing work. Uh, I said, but I don't have any internet connection, I don't have any customers, I said, I haven't got a website, I've got nothing. And he was like, okay, so what have you got? I went, right now, I said, I've got £2.87 in my bank account, which is probably about $5, something like that, five US dollars. And he was like, okay, he was like, well, look, use my internet connection. I was like, really? He was like, yeah, use the internet connection and just do what you've got to do. 
So I was like, wow, amazing. Search the internet, and I come across a ton of get-rich-quick schemes and all this rubbish that I'm sure a lot of the listeners have come across. And it was actually scary how much is out there. Um, you know, work one hour a day and make $30,000 a month and all of that. You know, don't do it, guys. Honestly, don't do it. Um, I literally, very luckily, I come across a webinar, and the webinar was about joint ventures and selling products. Um, well, I had no idea what a joint venture was. Absolutely no idea. Obviously, I knew what products were, but I had no products. <clears throat> so I went on this webinar, listened to this, and it was a two-hour webinar, and this guy was literally saying, right, you can create your own product, um, and you can find people that have a clientele that would be interested in your product. Um, you contact them, um, you do a joint venture, you split the profits 50-50 or whatever, um, and that's it. And he made it sound so easy, and I was like, awesome, that's great. Finished the webinar, um, and I suddenly thought, okay, right, I don't have a product, you know? So I started searching online because he was talking about all this information publishing and information products. And when I started searching online, people were talking about, you know, this product solves this problem, this product solves that problem. And I was like, okay, cool, that sounds great. So I literally then spent my next time, next few weeks, months, writing down all the mistakes and everything that I'd done in my business. Um, my marketing was rubbish. I spent loads of time selling because that's my background. I was, I was a sales consultant. Um, and all I kept doing was annoying people. So before I knew it, I'd wrote stuff down. And I actually, if people can see it, I ended up with this ebook. And I called it The Difference Between Success and Failure. It was about 175 pages. So I was like, wow, this is, this is my, my first little ebook. This is my first little product. And then went online and I searched for 50 people in the UK who I believed. I could do joint ventures with. I sent out 50 emails to people and I had 14 people reply back to me saying, Paul, love this, sorry about what's happened to you, I'd love to work with you, um, but unfortunately I can't do it now, it'll have to be in the next three or four months. So obviously I was gutted, I really was skint. This one guy, Tim from London, was like, Paul, I love this, send me a product, let's hook up on Skype. So we did, chatted on Skype, so I love your product, and I believe that, yes, this will really help my, um, my clientele and my audience. I was like, cool, okay. I said, so what do we do next then? He said, well, leave it with me. He said, I'll do some email marketing. He said, but we have to do that over the next four weeks. I went, well, why four weeks? He's like, well, we've got to build up the interest, build up a bit of desire and, and all of this sort of thing. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll leave you to it. So we did. <clears throat> three days before, we set a date. Three days before, he contacted and said, right, cool. All sorted. We're going to do a webinar. And I was like, wicked, excellent. Well, what are you doing the webinar on? He went, no, 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 Paul, you're doing the webinar. I went, I've never done a webinar in my life. He went, well, welcome to this online thing. And I was like, okay, dude, you, you, you're really scaring me now. I was like, what do I do? He went, just knock off a presentation. Um, and at the end, he said, sell your book. He went, you're a salesman, sell your book. And I went, okay. I went, how much am I selling it for? He went, 48 quid. I went, why 48 quid? He went, I don't know, that's just the first figure that came into my head. So I was like, oh my God. So I got this ebook, doing a webinar, I had no idea what I was doing, knocked up this pathetic presentation, um, and we'd done this webinar. And it was probably the worst sales pitch that I'd ever done in my life. At the end of the webinar, I literally sat there and I went, right, I said, I've knocked up this little ebook thing. Um, I said, I think it's going to help you. It's 48 pound and you can go here and, and buy it if you want it. Like, And uh, it was ridiculous. <laughs> I sold 128 copies and we made just over 6,000 pounds in profit, so about $9,000. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my god, I was like, damn, this stuff works. <laughs> I was like, Tim, what, what the hell have we just done? Um, so obviously, you know, we, we split this, we've done the joint venture, we split it 50-50. So the one condition that I said to, to these people was that, you know, we split the money 50-50, but I wanted all the names and email addresses of people who, who purchased the product. I didn't think anybody would purchase it, if I'm honest with you. Um, so to have suddenly 128 names, I was like, okay, so I've got three, three grand here, so about $5,000, and I've got 128 prospects. This is amazing. Here we go. You know, I suddenly felt like the king. So that was great. <clears throat> For the next couple of months, I then went back out doing what I've always done, knocking doors, cold calling doing everything that you know my first business failed on and before I knew it the free grand had gone and I was like oh man that was that was just ridiculous so uh, Tim and I hooked up again on Sky I was like look mate seriously you need to tell me what what you're doing how did you do this um, so he spoke about you know obviously renting and buying lists and I was like I'm skin I can't rent and buy lists 
And uh, at the time, obviously, again, you've got to remember this is late 2008. Social media was just getting going. It wasn't even big then. And uh, he was like, well, look, he said, get yourself on Twitter, get yourself on Facebook. And he said, and just post stuff. He said, but blog about what you're talking about. And I was like, right, okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> so I did. I started this blog. I learned how to do this blog through YouTube videos. And I was blogging about what I was doing. I was making videos. And, this. Um, and before I knew it, I started to get followers from America and from various different countries. And they was asking me questions, you know, literally, Paul, what are you doing? How are you doing this? And I was like, well, I don't really know what I'm doing. So, you know, how, how do you know what to ask me if I don't know what I'm doing? I'm just writing and making random videos, you know. Um, so it was all very bizarre. And then I started doing a bit of affiliate marketing and I'd made other products. Um, and then people were like, can you show me what you're doing? And I was like, yeah, cool. So I was just jumping on Skype and I was talking to them free, saying this is it, this is what I'm doing. Um, so I, I wasn't getting paid. I didn't really have a business model because I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Unfortunately, then, I'd like say sort of six months later or four months later, whatever it was, um, December 2009, um, sorry, between February 2009 and 2009, it was an awful time of year. As a family, we had seven family funerals um, in that time, and it, it was absolutely horrendous. Um, so I was back to square one. I was rock bottom. I was battling with depression and anxiety. I ended up getting a killer, um, and things were really, really bad. But I still had bills to pay and, and everything else. Um, the good thing that came out of that was the internet. I buried my head in the internet. I literally sat behind the computer, pretending everything was okay. I lived 300 miles away from my family. So, you know, being a positive person, I'm always like, yeah, man, I'm fantastic. Life's great, you know. Pff, don't worry about me. We've just gone through hell, but that's cool. You know, everything's <laughs> all right. Um, so I literally buried my head in, into the internet. Um, but I then started talking about my journey. I was talking about depression, the anxiety, the, the loss of my business and, and everything else. Um, and then it must have been about 2010, I think it was, a very successful internet marketer, multi-millionaire marketer, um, again, was doing a webinar. And he was talking about Facebook. And uh, I was like, okay, oh, cool, I'll, I'll go on this. So the build-up to, to the webinar, I was just posting stuff on Facebook. And I said, look, guys, um, I'm starting to help people, you know, I'm sort of creating this income online. Um, if you're interested, then, you know, drop me a line. And this is on my profile page. This one person contacted me and said, Paul, I see what you're doing on the internet. I love it. I'd love to, co uh, can you coach me? Can you help me? I was like, um, I can do, yeah, but I have no idea what I'm doing. But yeah, cool. <laughs> so I sent her a message and uh, so we spoke and she was like, this is brilliant. I love this. She went, how much do you charge? I went 2,000 pound. She went, okay, fantastic. So that's what, I don't know, four or $5,000 is it? I know $3,000, something like that. She didn't batter an eyelid. And I was like, wow, this is great. Transferred the money over, two grand in my bank, wicked. Worked with her for about six months. And I was like, wow, people are really serious about wanting to learn this internet stuff. You know, they're going to pay me like two grand. Um, so uh, Mark done this webinar and uh, he was talking about Facebook and everything else. And literally in the comments, I put, um, Mark, I've been using uh, Facebook ads. I said, I, uh, so I've been using Facebook and I put on there the other day that I'm coaching people with internet marketing. I made £2,000. And he was like, wow, I want to interview you. He then interviewed me um, and was talking about what I've done, what I achieved. <laughs> Um, and it just literally, it's just gone from there. Mark then done a, um, a huge seminar in London about 2010-ish, 2011, the ultimate Facebook seminar. He invited me to speak down there because I then went on and had some great success with Facebook. I think I made about £8,000 in, in nine weeks, something like that. Um, so huge, huge successes. Um, and it was literally, again, just saying, right, this is what I do. It's two grand. You, you either want it or you don't. It's as simple as that. Um, so over the years, I kind of really, through playing about, it was more luck than anything else, started getting people saying, can you help me? I was like, yeah, cool. The only reason why I said two grand was because at the time, I, my salary uh, was 25 grand uh, a year basic. So I just thought, okay, well, I've been earning like two grand a month. So if people can, you know, can pay me that, then fantastic. So that was kind of how it all went. So it was very up and down. But even then... I then started carrying on doing the whole, what I call traditional business model. Um, as a business owner, I was then going out because I didn't really know anything about target marketing. I didn't know who my target market was. I just knew that there was people interested in this whole, you know, online kind of thing. Um, 
So I still went out as a business owner. I was out. I was chasing prospects. I was cold calling. I was ringing, arranging meetings after meetings constantly. So I was driving to the, you know, to the cafes, to hotels, usual kind of stuff, having meetings, chatting away. Um, but I would spend most of my time talking to them, and my whole sales experience completely went out the window. You know, I, I wasn't qualifying them. I wasn't asking the right questions because I didn't really know what I was doing. You know. Um, so I was losing money, you know, because I was driving to these places, I was paying for parking, I was buying drinks and all of this sort of thing. And I was losing money. I would then come home and I would start arranging more meetings, you know, and then I'd be chasing the prospects on who I'd gone to see. And that was my whole circle. But yet I wasn't making the sale. Very rarely was I making the sale. And I just thought, you know what, this is ridiculous. I'm losing money here. People know what I'm doing. They know it's this whole internet thing. They know I've got a, an online business. Um, but I kind of lost track a little bit of what I was and what I am. I'm a sales consultant. It's as simple as that. I do sales consultancy. Um, so I was like, okay, I've really got to look at this as a, as a proper business. You know, I've really got to establish what I'm doing. I'd learned about products. I'd learned about information products and that was amazing. I was like, but I'm a sales consultant. Let's sort this out. So over the years then, you know, I managed to really play about with the internet. I learned obviously about squeeze pages, about blogging, sales pages, membership sites, residual income, all the usual sort of thing. And I was like, okay, there's got to be an easier way that I can get people to my website, how I can qualify them, and literally some sort of online sales process that I can put together that makes my life easier. Because I don't want to be cold calling, you know. And when I started, I didn't have the money. You know, I know I, I had a few, you know, two thousand pound incomes, but I'd have to live off of that. Um, so I was playing about, and you know, again, you hear about, um, as I said, squeeze pages and all of this sort of thing, sales funnels, and, and all of that. And I then sat back and thought about my business, uh, thought about being a salesman, thought about being in the motor trade. And the biggest thing that I learned, as I said, for the motor motor trade, was a target market. Now, while I was in, I had a daughter. I become a dad. Okay, so suddenly in the motor trade, I'd gone from this car salesman who was selling cars to anybody. Okay, anyone who walked through the door, I'd sell a car, and I was selling. I was averaging thirty-five brand new cars a month. I was one of the top salespeople, and I was doing extremely well. But then when I had my daughter, things completely changed. I suddenly realised. I thought, hang on a minute. I'm a dad now. I'm a parent here. I can now start talking the language to parents. I understand their wants and needs. I get what their requirements are. So if a family walked in, they're not going to want a little two-seater 1.2 sporty Clio. You know, it isn't going to happen. They're probably going to want something from like a, a Laguna, a Scenic, a Spa, something big, a big family car. So I thought, okay, this could work really, really well. So I then positioned myself. I suddenly found and I realized that I had a niche. And then I suddenly thought, well, hang on, I actually created a micro niche for myself. I put myself in this position where I only dealt with families. So as soon as families walked through the door, I said to all the other salespeople, and there was 12 of us, I said to all of them, look, any families, I'll speak to them. And they couldn't understand why, you know, because everyone hated families. Not disrespect to, to families and car salesmen, but, you know, it wasn't easy. So I was like, any families, send them my way. So I started dealing with them. Now, when they walked through the door and they were families, you know, I'd be able to ask them, you know, right, do you do long journeys? Yes, I do. Brilliant. So ideally you want a diesel, not a petrol. You know, do you take trips to the beach? Yes, I do. So you're going to want big luggage. You're going to want all the kids stuff, this that, and everything else. Do the kids get bored? Yes. So you want entertainment and all of this. So I really qualified them. So I then looked at my business and thought, I need to do the same. I need to qualify these people. <clears throat> so that was, that was literally what I started doing. I learned things about Survey Monkey. So over the years, through trial and error, spending thousands and wasting thousands online, I suddenly come up with what we call this stupidly simple four-step process um, to, to uh, yeah, to kind of my successful outcome, really. And all it is, it's very, very simple. Um, and excuse me if I look at the screen because I'm conscious of the time and I'm also, you know, looking at what I'm doing and where I am. So literally, if you imagine you've got your traffic, you send them to your squeeze page, okay? One of the biggest problems that I find with people when it comes to their squeeze page is they are not 100% clear on the problem they are trying to solve, okay? 
as a business owner, there's two things that you need to be 100% clear on. The first one, as I said, what is the number one problem that you are trying to solve? And why should people buy from you? Okay. If you get those two things 100% clear in your head, I guarantee your success will be so much easier. So the number one problem that I solve for people is their online strategy, their online marketing. And that starts with their website. <clears throat> Excuse me. People are prepared to pay thousands of pounds to get a pretty looking website. Okay. These pretty little websites do not make money. Um, if there's any web developers out listening to this, I'm really, really sorry. I don't mean this rudely, <laughs> but web developers aren't internet marketers. Okay. Right. We have a completely different mindset to how a website will work. So I suddenly realized that, like I say, the number one problem was people's websites. So my squeeze page solves that problem. I offer a free 90 minute strategy call, okay? And it starts off by looking at their website. So it simply says, what's the point of your website? Does it really work? I then explain, obviously, what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna do it, and all of this. And I pay with the emotions and all the you know, typical ADA marketing methods. So I know when I'm writing my marketing material, that is my headline. Does your website work? Do you want a free strategy call, et cetera? They go to my squeeze page. When they opt in onto my squeeze page, obviously they go through onto my Aweber account, my email marketing account. So the whole point of this process was to eventually try and eliminate the freebie seekers. Because all I seemed to be getting was tire kickers, freebie seekers, you know, and I just thought, damn, this is doing my head in. So I'd go onto my uh, Aweber list, I'd speak to them, I'd do a 90 minute call, and I just couldn't close them. I was like, this is ridiculous, okay, this is mental, I don't get this. <clears throat> so I then again saw, okay, I obviously need to add something else here. I don't want to sell to them, because it's a free strategy call, I don't want to start selling, but I need to qualify them, I need to do something which puts some sort of criteria in place, but also allows them to qualify them, because I'm getting on the phone and it just isn't working. <clears throat> So I kept the squeeze page the same, I kept that the same. Free strategy call and it was all about solving a problem to their website. Now yes, that might attract freebie seekers, they go onto my email list, but as soon as they click there, and here's the biggest thing, the button that they click, you see a lot on the internet, download now, get instant access, buy now, and all of this sort of thing, okay? <clears throat> As a consultant, I wanted to make it personal, I wanted to speak to people. Okay, now there's a big issue suddenly when, when it comes to internet marketing that, oh my God, we can't speak to people, you know? <laughs> there's a reason why these mobile phones are so <laughs> successful, all right? And that's because we need to speak to people. So I thought, okay, I need to try this. So the little button here at the bottom, instead of it saying get instant access, download now, whatever, it says click here and arrange a time when Paul can ring you, okay? <laughs> and that was so, so crucial. So as soon as they click on there, they then go to another page. They're on my email list, but it goes to another page. That page then tells them what I'm going to do for them. I'm going to create you a plan that works. I'm going to speak to you and create a plan that's going to help you sell more, create more profit without you constantly networking, without you cold calling. Here's who I am. Here's what I do. Here's my fees. This is how much it's going to cost you, okay? I now charge between six and 10 grand for this stuff. So I tell them exactly how much it is up front. I then turn around and say, look, you know, if, uh, our plan, if the plan for you doesn't work, if I call or I've wasted your time, I will send you 300 pounds worth of products as compensation, but you still get to keep the plan. But here's the thing, I can't work with everybody. I don't want to work with everybody, okay? I can only work with 10 people at a time. So here's what I'm asking for you. So I then put a criteria in place. <clears throat> and for my consultancy, and I have a different criteria to, for my consultancy and my coaching. <clears throat> Excuse me. So my criteria for my consultancy is something along the lines of you have to be in business for a minimum of 18 months. Okay. You have to have at least, um, I think I've got at least 250 people on your database, something along the lines of that. You have to have at least £300 a month. Um, you have to be prepared to talk to me, I think, once a week or something like that. It's about six different criterias. At the bottom of that, I then turn around and say, right, please take three minutes of your time to answer this quick questionnaire, okay? So if they're not happy with all of that, they might click off of that page. But yeah, I've still, I've still got their email, okay? 
if they're happy with everything, if they're happy with my feeds, they're happy with the criteria and everything else, they then go and complete the Survey Monkey questions. Survey Monkey's free. I write 10 questions. Those 10 questions are written in a way that those people say yes to everything that's written. Okay, so they complete that survey. Now, the first email that they get from me is very simple. Hi, thank you ever so much for trusting me with your details. Did you qualify for the free 90 minute um, strategy call? If not, please click here and make sure you qualify. So I then, even if they're freebie seekers, I make them go straight back to the qualifying page and I get them to qualify themselves, okay? So they go through that. The second email, thanks ever so much, you've qualified. I really appreciate this. <clears throat> now you've qualified, please just take three minutes to click this link and answer these 10 questions. So I send them back to SurveyMonkey to complete it, okay? The third email, thank you ever so much, you've qualified, you've completed the survey. I'm really enjoying working on your, uh, your plan and your marketing plan. Please click here and arrange a time when Paul can ring you personally. So they click on there, they then go to a software which is called vCeta. vCeta is 100% free. It then allows them to arrange three times when I can ring them. So they simply enter the date, time, when I can ring them, okay? That's it, I then pick up the phone, and the good thing is, is the strategy, because I'm working, I'm purely solving a problem with their, web, with their website, the plan that I give them is the same for every Tom, Dick, and Harry. So I'm not doing a different plan every single time, because I'm, say, I'm solving the, the same problem over and over again. So when I get them on the phone, and again, this is the only time I speak to them. I've not gone out networking. I've not gone out cold calling or anything. They've arranged a time for me to ring them. I get them on the phone, and I simply go through the questions on SurveyMonkey. Okay, so it's things like, um, if you could wave a magic wand over your business, what would you like to happen? So they answer that question. So I've then got them on the phone, and I'm like, so then, Carrie, you said in 12 months, if you wave a magic wand over your business, you would like this to happen. That's correct, isn't it? And you're like, yeah, yeah, cool. And I'm like, yeah, I know, of course it is. You've already told me that. Mm -hmm. so, so you want to double your profit. Yeah, that's correct, isn't it, Carrie? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I know, you've already told me that. You want to build your list. You want to do this. So everything, they've already said yes. So at the end of it, I'm like, look, so you've just said yes to everything. You can clearly see by the strategy and the plan that I've put together that I can help you. I've got a spare slot, we can start working next week, as from 10 o'clock, I send you the invoice now, pay now, and we we'll start working together. I'll look forward to working with you. That is it, it's a very simple process, okay? At the moment, and again, they go through my sales funnel, so they will get offered a 10 grand done for you package, they get a six grand consultancy package, all the way down to a 47 pound membership, okay? A couple of free grand services, a few hundred pound services, products, etc. At the moment, going through my sales funnel, I am closing 83% of people that come through. I put a, a picture of my, my Aweber, um, one of my Aweber lists, this particular list in, in my group the other day. My open rate for my emails are 73.7% up to 100% open rate. Wow. Okay, and I'm That's more impressive. than happy. Yeah, I would even. I'm more than happy. I, I can send you that that picture code to show people. That mm -hmm. is no BS, honest to God. And the reason being is because I'm qualifying these people. Okay, so the people that are going through it, they are serious buyers. They are qualified leads. In the last, well, since March, I think March, April time, I've been trying a different strategy. I've done a lot of Facebook ads over the years. But I wanted to try something completely different, and I've been trying a strategy since about, yeah, about April time on Facebook. I'm currently getting 20 free leads, not 20 free, but 20 leads completely free every single day from Facebook. They're going into my group, 11 of them are opting in, and again, I'm closing these people, okay? All from my laptop. So I've built up my consultancy business extremely well. Um, I've done a Facebook ad as a couple of years ago, um, uh, my first six-figure year. Um, I spent £355 in 11 months on Facebook, so that's about £400, dollars. I think £500. Dollars. My return on investment was £110,000. Nice. And that was because it's high-ticket stuff. 
Okay. Um, I'm now on course on track for the next 12 months to do, I think, around about 280K, something like that. So I'm 38. I'm mortgage free. Um, my life is now split. I, I mean, this is my home here, um, which I'm now, as I said, I'm mortgage free. I don't have a mortgage. Um, at 38, which I'm blessed with. It's only a two bed flat. Uh, it's not a massive mansion. I don't drive a fancy car, but I'm mortgage free. I generally spend my life now. I spend three months living out in India. I've got property out there. Um, I work with a child rescue charity, which we've now rescued. It's around about six to 8,000 kids out in India. Um, and I train their marketing department. I do fundraising and I spend, like I say, three months of the year out there. I spend three months down hanging around with my parents, um, which is amazing. I spend three months up here in kind of my little retreat and the other three months I do what the heck I want to do. Um, so I took my consultancy business from a struggling 16 grand a year income to then making it a six figure consultancy business. Thanks to that two or three years ago, um, I started then a coaching business. Now I want to make that very clear because there's a lot of coaches out there and no offense to any other coaches. But coaching is huge. Yeah, we all know Tony Robbins created and made the coaching industry, okay? <clears throat> but suddenly what frustrates me about the coaching industry is that everyone's a coach. Everyone's either a business coach, a life coach, or whatever. I see a ton of business coaches um, trying to coach who are struggling, okay? And I'm not saying that to sound rude or sound negative, but the only reason I'm saying it is because I created a very successful consultancy business before I started coaching, okay? Now I coach people the blueprint of what's made me successful. So over the last three years, I've now put together what I call uh, the business makeover. I do a business makeover boot camp. I do the business makeover uh, coaching program. And in the next couple of months, I'm launching what's gonna be called a business makeover academy. And it's for serious entrepreneurs. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a mastermind group where I'm gonna be taking people to exotic countries all around the world. And it's been amazing. It's been absolutely amazing. Now, in the last few years, because of this, with my story, um, I was offered a publishing contract a couple of years ago, uh, which was absolutely amazing. As I said, I left school being dyslexic, uh, got bullied, absolutely horrendous, <clears throat> got no qualifications. I only read my first book 10 years ago, okay? And a little bit of a plug, <laughs> but there's my little, there's my little baby. Um, <laughs> That first ever ebook that I wrote, Difference Between Success and Failure, back in 2008, um, I increased on that and I made that into my book. And I've now become an international best selling author, published author, which I'm extremely proud about. I've trained over 12,500 people from 11 different countries. So my journey has been incredible and it hasn't been a smooth roller coaster. I know we all hear these stories and we all tell these stories, but honestly, it hasn't been easy but I've stuck with it, okay? And, and obviously my book is called No Excuses, No Limits because we can't be making excuses. You know, Facebook's free, Twitter's free, YouTube's free. You know, I started a business with less than $5 in my bank account, okay? I've now created, and these aren't plugs, but I've now created, you know, different products. There's some of my CDs, DVDs, you know, I, I'm known as a product developer. Um, you know, so these like CDs, DVDs, these are made for like £4.50 and I sell them for 47 quid each. Um, I've got one here, which is a, a four disc marketing swipe file, 25 quid to make, and that sells for 600 pound. Okay. Um, so, you know, for me, it's talking about creating serious profits in a business. So all I've done over the last few years is that I've created, um, as I said, this business makeover coaching program. Um, and it's my seven pillars to business freedom. Okay. Um, and all that is again, looking at everything I've done. So. I looked at how I positioned myself in the motor trade. You know, I went from this car salesman dealing with every Tom, Dick, and Harry to then working specifically with parents. So I suddenly put myself in this micro niche, okay, which was great. Um, you then obviously I started looking at publishing. You know, we live in this information publishing world. We talk about videos, audio, articles, and everything else. So I was like, okay, we need to be publishing. I started getting success because of my blog. I started attracting people to my blog. So I thought, okay, cool. So we've got um, positioning, we've then got publishing. I then thought, okay, well, I have to have a process. You know, the whole process that I required was crucial. So I then put process. I then started thinking about products because I created products. There's another P. Um, I then started obviously looking again, excuse me, um, at profits um, and in positivity. 
Um, so all of this suddenly, you know, it just literally everything began with a P. So, you know, before mm -hmm. I knew it, yeah, I had what I called a, the seven pillars to business freedom. Um, but it's all thanks to the internet. It really is. And as I said, uh, you know, I, I'm very fortunate. I spend three months of the year out in India. It's soon to be probably six months of the year. But I still do my consultancy. I still do my coaching. Um, and I've been very blessed because over the years, you know, I've worked with some massive companies of, from a consultant. Um, I've worked with the likes of Audi. I've worked with the likes of Jaguar, uh, with CETA, DFS, some big, big, massive, you know, billion pound companies, organizations here because I now set up their strategies. Okay. I look at their online sales funnels. Um, I look at their processes. So if I'm doing a product launch, you know, I've got a particular um, funnel uh, for product launches, whether it's through webinars or whatever. I work with fellow consultants and coaches, you know, because one of the biggest things that I found, especially where I live, there's a lot of consultants and coaches that are still working by the hour, you know, and they might charge £20 an hour or something like that. Well, th th that's not a living, that's not a business, you know. The reason why with my consultancy I charge sort of two and a half grand, six grand and stuff like that. It's because I value my expertise, all right? I know if I was to go to a job, heaven forbid, I hope that never happens, but if I was to ever go back and get a job, I would demand at least 70, 80 grand a year as a sales and marketing consultant because I know what I'm valued at. But yet the sad thing is, you know, when we go into business, we seem to lose that. We forget our value. You know, the average UK salary as a marketing consultant in the UK is £36,000 a year. Um, as a sales consultant, I think it's about twenty two grand a year, okay? So I offer sales and marketing. So when I put myself out as a marketing consultant and I'm marketing myself like that, I simply turn around and say, right, you can work with me. Uh, for, it's £2,500 a month. You can work with me. That um, you haven't got to employ me. There's no contract. There's no national insurance. There's no PAYE. None of this tax malarkey or whatever. You can work with me for two months, three months, twelve months, whatever. If it doesn't work, just tell me to go. Okay. <clears throat> Here's why I charge two and a half grand to work with him as consultant. Two and a half grand is what is less than the uh, the average salary as a marketing person. As I said, it's thirty six grand. So that's I don't know three grand a year, something like that. <clears throat> So instantly, I say to them, you can hire me as a marketing consultant, and I'm already saving you £8,000 a year. And I'm like, wow, okay. I'm like, plus then if we look at the advertising costs, your time and everything to interview someone, let's just say I'm saving you about twelve grand a year working with me as a freelance consultant. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. I'm like, exactly. Now that £12,000, we're going to do a proper marketing campaign. Oh, and by the way, you're also going to get me as a sales consultant as well which again, I'm going to save you £22,000 because you won't have to employ me. What I do as a sales consultant is I will work with your sales staff and I will work with them and make sure that they are qualifying prospects properly, that they have a niche, a micro niche, and they understand everything. And I then start coaching their sales staff. So instantly I've put myself out there as like, I'm saving you a ton of money. You can get rid of me whenever you want, but I have a simple step-by-step -step process. You know, which keeps them coming back pretty much every month up until about eight months. So charging two and a half grand for consultancy, I only need four clients to make a very good income. And then for my coaching, I charge between six and ten grand for my coaching. So I don't need a lot of customers. Right. So all I've done here, guys, is literally I flipped the traditional internet marketing sales funnel upside down. Okay, because when we get onto the internet, all these gurus talk about you know, offer a free product, an ebook, a video course, whatever it is, and then upsell to say a $47 product, then upsell to a $97, $197, etc. If your free product <clears throat> is completely rubbish, okay, and it doesn't over deliver, you have got absolutely no chance in upselling to a $47 product. But the sad thing is you would have spent a ton of money and a ton of time getting thousands of people into the front end of your funnel to try and sell that, okay? So I do an example with people, and I work on about 20,000 people. If you spend a ton of money trying to get 20,000 people into your sales funnel and your front end product or your free uh, lead mag is completely rubbish, as I said, you ain't going to upsell. You, know, you will be lucky to convert 0.5% people, something like that. It's, it's frightening, it really is, but these gurus do that. 
So all I've done is completely turned over. I built a massive list of over 40,000 people when I started, but I didn't know anything about email marketing. The only time these people heard from me is when I wanted to sell something. And I burnt that list. I absolutely burnt yeah. it. So again, I had to start again. So it was like, hang on a minute. I don't have the money to do all this. I don't have the money to build a massive list again. What can I do differently? So that was it. I just thought, okay, well, if I start charging more, if I value my expertise, I've got a few products. If I can value my expertise, people will do this. You know, I've positioned myself. I've published all this content. I'm found all over the internet. They will pay. So now, as I said, my over delivering for it, and it doesn't matter if you're a consultant, a coach, a trainer, you know, hey, even if, you, if you've got a network marketing business, this will work for you. The things that I offer, as I said, to over deliver is a 90 minute, an hour and a half consultation and an hour and a half coaching call. I see all of these consultants and all of these coaches offering a 30 minute free coaching call, or a 30 minute consultation. What on earth can you deliver in 30 minutes? It's ridiculous. I, I can't do 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right, me and you need to talk. But right. I, I want to know about them. You know, this, this consultancy call, this coaching call, is about them. It's not about me. Who cares about me? You know, well, obviously I do and my family do, but it's about them. I spend 30 minutes talking about them, okay? And here's why. Because when they go through this and they want a, co a coaching call or consultation, I send them 36 questions via a Word document. And I want them to complete it. That's my business autopsy. So I turn around and go, right, answer these questions. I want to know everything about them. If they're not prepared to answer those questions, they ain't getting me on the phone for 90 minutes. Okay? Exactly. So I turn around and go, right, complete these 36 questions. This will allow me to help you the best I possibly can. Email these documents back to me two days before our call. So it allows me to go through absolutely everything, all these questions. So again, I'm qualifying them again, okay? And then I'll speak to them for 90 minutes. As I said, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, all about them. Then I'll talk a little bit about my journey, what I can do from how that benefit, and then I'll close them on the phone. So again, just offer them. And the biggest problem, especially being a strategist, you know, on my website, I've got loads of different pictures of funnels and, and all sorts that I do. I know of what I offer, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, it will look complicated, okay? Mm -hmm. So I know damn well, these people are gonna be like, Paul, dude, seriously, I need you to do this. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. I know, I know Over, you do. A little overwhelmed it's, helpful. Ex <laughs> exactly, it's like, I know you do. Um, so I can offer you a done for you package where I will build your complete campaign and it's 10 grand. Ah, right, okay, well I haven't got that. Okay, well I can coach you for the next 12 months and it's six grand. And they might say, I haven't got that. But here's the thing, I don't want to lose these people. They've shown that they're prepared to work for me. They want to work for me. They've qualified themselves. They've took time, okay? So although I'm selling high ticket stuff, let's go back to when we have a job where every single month we get paid, month in and month out, no matter what we do. We have a guaranteed income. When we go self-employed, we don't have a guaranteed income. So I say to these guys, okay, so it's a 10 grand done for you package. Let's break this down. Let's just say, you know, I'll work with you for three or six months. I'll build this for you. It's going to take me a month or so to build it or a couple of days to build it, whatever. I'm then going to work with you over the next three to six months to make sure you get the results and make sure that this works for you. So because of that, let's break it down. I'll work with you for six months. You pay me over the next six months and I'll make it affordable for you. So I then know that I'm getting a guaranteed residual income offer this person it's still going to be 10 grand but i've made it affordable to them you know i haven't put any interest on it but suddenly they're like paul really you've given me a 90 minute call you've given me a strategy and a plan you've told me you're going to do it and now you're making it affordable for me how much over delivering <laughs> is that i haven't just i haven't just turned around and gone here you go here's an ebook for 47 quid or no here's a free ebook i've completely over delivered for them and this is all i do Okay, so it's very, very simple. So as I said, now you know I've got I've got my book. I mean, there's a magazine here, which is it's called Make Money Magazine. It's one of the largest business magazines, if not the largest business magazine uh, in the UK. Um, I was featured in that a couple of years ago. There's a ton here of media. I get a lot of press now. I get a ton of media. Um, the media that I had a couple of years ago for my book doubled my income. 
Uh, again, the media that I've had this year from an event, bringing different gurus and that from the UK. Um, and it's all from my laptop, guys. Okay, so honestly, it's it's simple, uh, i.e. a stupidly simple four-step process. Um, right. But it all depends if you value yourself or not. Do you really value yourself to start charging high-ticket stuff? And if you don't, you need to question yourself why. It's just a mindset thing. It's just a mindset thing. Absolutely. What I love that you said right in the beginning, first and foremost, which is very inspiring, is the dyslexia, obviously. So mm. you had some challenges in there. Mm. But your attitude is what I think has determined your success more than anything. You know, it's, mm. that intention is sometimes more powerful than the mechanism that gets you to the result. Yeah. And in your, in your case, you just jumped in. I mean, took what you had and made the most of it. You know, you've got to look. It's as I said. You know, I've <clears throat> I've battled with depression. I've battled with anxiety. I've battled with bullying, depression, uh, drugs. You know, I, I've 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 had two lots of counselling. I had counselling for four and a half years through drink, drugs, depression. Um, I was arrested when I was thirteen through theft, just purely because I was trying to be in a cool gang. Um, the only people who thought that put that gang wasn't cool were my parents. Um, mm -hmm. But even as a teenager, you know, part of why the bullying started, as a teenager, I had two jobs. Now, I was earning £75 a week as a teenager. So I don't know what that is, about $100 a week as a teenager. You know, I was doing a paper round and I was working at my local football club. At the age of 17, when I learned to drive and pass my test, I saved £2,500, okay, and I bought my first car. So again, I don't know, four thousand dollars something like that um i bought my first car people didn't look at me as saving my money they looked at me as mummy and daddy's little rich kid but yet my mum worked part-time in a banker's customer service on about twelve thousand pound a year and my dad was a factory worker uh, on about 16 grand a year you know so they didn't have a lot of money and i haven't been born with a silver spoon in my mouth but what i have learned from my parents is to work you've got to bloody work and what frustrates me, you know, is that people go on the internet and it's all this get rich quick stuff, you know, copy and paste rubbish and everything else. This is a real business, guys. Okay. Please know I've been doing this eight years. It took me four years to really understand and grasp what the heck I was doing. And it's taken the last four years to test and try all these different methods to get to where I've got to. The reason why I'm coaching people now is because I don't want them to go through the same pain barriers. Okay, I really don't. I learned the hard way, but I had no choice because I didn't have the money. But I've got this, you know, I'm a salesman. I've got this go get it attitude. You now, every job I had was literally, right, there's your desk, Paul. This is your business. Get on with it. You know, so I would get given the yellow pages. You know, one of the strategies I use now, I don't work, I don't advertise in the yellow pages, but I've got five different copies of the yellow pages behind me. Um, and I do that and I use them. I look at them because I know these companies that are advertising in there are spending sort of five to ten grand. But if they've got five to ten grand to advertise in that, which isn't going to get them a return on investment, they've got five or ten grand to work with me. So all it is, the whole reason, please, when you look at the internet, don't look at the internet as this get rich quick malarkey. It's a it's just a simple, it's another platform, another marketing platform. Now I do direct mail, I do copywriting and everything else. But internet marketing is another platform for marketing, but it's a great way to make your life easy. Now, one of the biggest things I say to people, and it's in my book, and I tell you when I speak, and the life that you have led until now doesn't have to be the only life that you lead. Okay? And the internet can change that. I've put processes online. It doesn't matter if I'm in India, if I'm in America, if I'm in London, it doesn't matter. The strategy is in place and it works, okay? I literally leverage the internet. But I have, I've got to go get an attitude, you know? And we all have lockdowns, that's life. You know, but when I, I, I say it to everybody, you know, if when I started riding a bike, I didn't get on a bike and I suddenly started riding. You know, I fell off constantly, you know? I'd scratched my arm, I'd done my knees and everything else, but I kept going. You know, driving a car, I failed my first test, I passed second time, but actually I had a on my second time, I did my first, but I kept going. None of these things have killed me. You know, I'm still here to tell the story. And for me, that's what's more important. You know, in my book, I talk about goals, I talk about simply simplifying your life. I've got here, if people can see it, this is my little vision book, okay? It's got the Indian on, on there, which I've got tattooed all over my arm and everything. 
I'm very much into personal development. I'm a very spiritual guy. But these are my goals. I've got pictures of, of my family. I've traveled now with my family. I get to spend my retirement, my mum and dad's retirement with them. You know, the first picture in here is my mum and dad. And I created this book in 2009. Uh, literally a few months of having it. Um, I put in there that I wanted to, to go to the Taj Mahal somewhere. There's a picture of here of having the Taj Mahal. <clears throat> There's actually Vegas here. That's when I, that's when I went first went to Vegas when I stayed in the, uh, the Escalibur Hotel. But I've got all sorts in here. Now, I made a goal. I wanted to go to the Taj, and I can't find it now. But I put in here a picture of the Taj Mahal in 2009. I was determined I wanted to go to the Taj Mahal. 2012, I went out to India. I went out there for three months. I took my laptop. My mum and dad were with me, and we travelled India. I travelled India with my parents. I went from Goa to Mumbai to Delhi, all the way up to the Himalayas with my parents. You know, they retired at the age of 65. They cannot grasp that, you know, well, I'm 38 now, so I would have been 35. They can't grasp that I took my laptop, I still done my business, and I'm travelling around India with them. You know, they waited 65 years to do this. You know, but I've got my goals in here. You know, I know it sort of, but all at the back, I've got my goals, I've got my targets, how much I want to worth, uh, how much I want to earn, and everything else. So please, just because you're doing business on the internet, don't take it for granted. Set your goals. You know, you've got to have a reason why. You know, my, my reason why is my family, but it's also this charity out in India. But every single day, I know what I want to target. As I said, I'm getting 20 leads a day. That's my aim. I want to get 20 leads a day. I've gone from three, I've gone to six, I've gone to 10, I'm now getting 20. I will up that. You know, and my big aim, as I said, I support this charity. I'm committing to this charity. Um, and I'm now, I just got, well, I say just got back. I got back uh, middle of March, end of March. We're now building a, a call center and an outsource center uh, out in Goa. Um, and the plan for that now is, like I say, these young kids, these children that they rescue, which they save, um, they are literally kicked out on the street at the age of three to go and beg, to go and get money. Um, if they come back with no money, they are told to go out and don't come back until they get money. And a lot of these children never come back, sadly. Um, and they are found upside down in skips, you know, and it's awful. When they do, if they do come back, the dad takes the money, he drinks alcohol, he gets drunk, and he physically and mentally abuses these kids. And it is awful. Some of these kids are battered with scars and all sorts. So I now get to spend time with them. Now, in India, having a degree is really, really important. But there's a lot of these young kids who aren't going to get a degree, sadly. They just haven't got it. I haven't got a degree, um, so that isn't a problem with me. So I want to help these kids who aren't going to get a degree. So I said to the charity, right, let's set up a call center. Or let's set up some sort of uh, outsourcing center. They've already got schools. They've got colleges and all sorts. So come the age of 15, what we're going to do with these young kids, <laughs> we're going to put them, we're going to give them a job in this call center. Uh, we will train them on customer service, sales, social media, marketing, and all sorts. And they're going to do like a three-year training program, a bit like an apprentice. We will pay them on a daily basis. Half of their wage, we are going to save and put in a bank account for them. The other half, they can live on it, okay? At the end of the three years, <clears throat> what they will then do is they will have a, an option and say, right, at the end of the three years, you've now got all these skills, customer service, social media marketing, sales, you've got all these skills. Do you want to go to university? If you want to try and go to university and get a degree, you've got these experience, you've got these skills. We've also saved half of your wages for the last three years, so here's a pot of money for you to go and do it. But if you don't want to go and do it, we completely understand and we'd love to offer you a job in this organization, in this call center, okay? If you want us to keep saving half of your salary, we can do. If not, we'll give you access to the account and it's all yours. But we want to do that. My goal is to create a call center in Goa with about 600 people in there. We are now offering, and we are not offering, but we are giving these kids a safe and secure future. We're working with their families. We talk to their families about you know, how to look after them properly. Uh, we're educating the families about eating properly, healthily, and all of this sort of thing. So my goal, my big mission, and why I'm setting up and launching the Business Makeover Academy, I want to change the lives of six million people. Okay, Those six million people could be these kids. They could be ordinary people like you and I and the listeners. Okay, Everyone deserves to live a life that they deserve to live. And we can all do it in one way or another, okay? So my big, big mission is, really is to change the lives of six million people around the world. 
I believe with technology I can do it. It's not going to happen overnight, but I'm determined I will do it. But I can't do it on my own. I need people to help me. Um, Carrie, I'm going to speak to you guys because I want to get you involved with the, the Business Makeover Academy as well. Um, so that's my goal. That's my why. That's my big vision. Okay. Every single morning I wake up because I can see these kids out in India. Okay. Um, I'll tell you a very, very story very quickly about India and, and then I, I will have to crack on because I know we're short for time. <clears throat> but when I was out there in 2012, I went out there, I traveled and it was amazing. I ended up doing some fundraising on the beach for this charity. And uh, this little lad, Michael, um, he was with me for, for about four hours and we was walking up and down the beach fundraising and whatnot. We had to be back by four o'clock. And uh, and you know when you're on holiday, the sun sort of starts going and you think, oh crap, yeah, you know, we, we need to start heading back. <clears throat> I pulled my phone out of my pocket to check the time, right? And Michael looked at me and went, oh my God, you've got an iPhone. My response was like, yeah, that was it. That was my response. I then followed it by saying, Michael, it's nearly four o'clock. We need to walk back, all right? Probably then within about five or 10 yards, I suddenly realized how selfish and how ungrateful I sounded because I was coming back home within the next three weeks of that. And when I got back, I was upgrading my phone. I was getting a brand new iPhone and I was getting an iPad okay, for free. And I looked at Mike, I went, Mike, I said, what do you know about this iPhone? He went, he went, do you know Steve Jobs? And I went, well, I don't know him, mate. No, I said, but obviously I know of him. I said, why? What do you know about Steve Jobs? He went, Steve Jobs is the iPhone. And I was like, well, yeah, pretty much, mate. I said, pretty much. I went, what do you know about him? He went, he's my mentor. I've read his books. I love him. I love everything about it. Within that walk back, which is about half an hour, he taught me more about Steve Jobs than what I knew, okay? It was unbelievable. I then said to Mike, I went, Mike, I said, what's the crack with you, mate? I said, how come you're involved with, uh, with El Shaddai? He said, well, I'm 15 now. He said, I've been with El Shaddai, I think, since about four or five. I was like, right, so, so how did you get involved? And this is when he started telling me, again, you know, his dad told him, literally kicked him out to go and beg, go and get money and, and to come back, and he was physically and mentally beaten. One day he couldn't come back because he didn't have any money. Although this is awful, it's actually a blessing. There was one day where one of the um, volunteers from El Shaddai was in Mumbai. She was on her little scooter. She pulled up to a roundabout. She was looking left, looking right, waiting to go. The traffic in, obviously, in India is just mayhem, okay? As she looked left, all she could see were these two little legs sticking out from one of these massive, big industrial bins. She had no idea what was going on. She turned left, went to the skip. <clears throat> As she looked in, there was this little kid literally eating whatever he could from this skip. She pulled him out, and it was Michael. It was this little boy. I then looked at him. I said, well, so what, what, so what, what had happened? He said, well, I, I wasn't getting any money. He said, I couldn't return. He said, I'd, every time I'd return with no money, I was beaten. I was physically beaten. So I didn't want to. He said, I had to survive. He said, so I would eat and do whatever I did. He said, sometimes I'd sleep in these bins. He said, and I'm very grateful now that this charity has saved me. He said, I've gone through school and I'm hopefully going to get a job. I want to be an engineer. I was like, wow. I said, why do you want to be an engineer? I said, do you know about Steve Jobs? I said, would you not think about the internet? He went, I love the internet. Yeah, he said, that'd be amazing. I'd love to get involved with that. I said, so if I could teach you things about social media in a digital world, would you like that? He said, I'd love it. I said, you know what, Michael? I said, I'm going to ask if I can give you this phone. I said, because I think you deserve this phone. I said, but when I get back, I said, I'm going to set something up. I said, I'd love you to be a part of it. He's like, what do you mean? I said, I'm not going to tell you just yet. I said, but I'd love to be a part of it and I want to stay in contact. I now sponsor him and I sponsor a couple of other little, little kids. I come back and I set up another company. I set up Digital Youth Enterprise. And Digital Youth Enterprise is a not-for-profit social enterprise inspiring, encouraging, and working, supporting with 16 to 24-year-olds from all backgrounds. This 15-year-old kid completely changed my thinking. He completely changed my life. I'd always been grateful for things. But at the same time, I took things for granted. He's now doing some amazing things. He's going to come into the call center. He's an incredible little boy. We've now got some of these kids who have got jobs, who have gone off and working for Qatar in the call center. Um, some of them are working in uh, big BT call centers out there. These are the most inspirational kids ever, and they don't take things for granted. And that's the biggest lesson for me. You know, we all wake up. I'm sat here, you know, I've got a, a MacBook Pro in front of me, which is, I don't know, about a thousand pounds. I've got a 21 inch iMac, you know, about two and a half grand. I've got a brand new phone. I've got all sorts around me. 
and we will sometimes take it for granted. So the biggest thing I say to people, and please remember, as I said, the life that you have led now doesn't have to be the only life that you lead because we can all make a difference, but only we can do it. We can take inspiration from other people, okay, but only we can do it. Do not give up because you deserve to live life on your terms, but don't give up. Don't take advantage of the internet. Share your message. And the last thing I would say to people, everyone says to me, and again, I spoke about this the other day, people always say to me, Paul, I want to make more money. I want to sell more products and services. The number one thing I say to them is simple. Stop selling your products and services. Start marketing your story. Spend 80% of your time marketing your story. I said earlier, there's two things that you need to get right. Get clear 100% on what the problem is you're solving. And the second one, be 100% clear on why people should buy from you. That why people should buy from you is your story. I started my business with £2.87 in the bank account. No customers, no internet connection, no website. I now live life on my terms. That's my why. That's my story. I help people start, grow, and succeed in business on a shoestring budget. It hasn't been easy, but my God, it's been worth it. And I love it. Absolutely love it. Carrie, I've probably gone over way over time here. I hope that's <laughs> helped sense. But look, man, guys, seriously, thank you ever so much. Carrie, I'm so grateful that you've had me on here. I hope there's been some value from this call. Um, but I, I can't thank you enough. I, I really do appreciate it. Well, before we end, we want to at least let the audience know how to get hold of you, reach you, and what kind of offer you have for us today. Mm. <clears throat> Um, detail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, forgot about that a little bit. I just went off on a tangent. I did say to Carrie when we started this, and I just waffled and talked. Um, All good. Uh, well, look, my, my book is, it's, I'm a published author, okay? I'm not self-published. So, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to give any of the physical books away. But what I have done, um, the full book is an ebook. It's been converted into an ebook. So, um, if anyone's interested in it, um, they can go to the website, which is no excuses, no limits book.com, um, and they can download it from there. Okay. Um, I, I'm very honest with people, guys. I'm not saying that this is the best book. Okay. I know everyone's like, I've got a book and it's the best. I'm not saying this is the best book. There's spelling mistakes in here, there's grammar mistakes in here, but this is me. It's me, it's written from the heart. It's who I am. If you go to the squeeze page, you will see it's been downloaded over 10,000 times. Um, so go for it. Get a free copy, um, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, leave a comment and question on that squeeze page. So, yeah, that that's it. So thank you ever so much. I hope I've shared some value here, and you know, yeah, reach out to me. I'm on Facebook, Paul Wakefield. Um, so yeah, reach out to me. Absolutely, I love it. More than anything, though, Paul, I think you just kind of gave us that full circle effect. It's very, very fun and fulfilling to help clients anyway, but you take it a step further in helping with a charity, which is just even more emotionally fulfilling. I mean, that's just priceless mm -hmm. feeling at the end of well, the day. You know, you're like, that's why I'm here. It is. It's incredible. I mean, now, the reason why I mentioned the Digital Youth Enterprise, I work with a lot of schools, colleges, and universities here in, in where I live, and uh, we're doing different projects. Um, so I get a lot of students involved with Digital Youth Enterprise, but what I've said to the charity is that because it is a not-for-profit social enterprise, 50% of that profit from that organization will go to the charity. Um, the other 50% uh, will continue with training and, and everything else. Um, but it is, I want to make a huge difference to these kids. You know, yes, it's a charity out in India. And they're also based in the UK. Um, I know as a country, as the UK, we, we send a lot of money over to India and that. Um, that's down to the government. They can do what they want. You know, India actually tells our government not to send any money. They don't want it. Um, but these kids really inspired me. Um, and I do. I want to make a difference. So please be very clear and have a huge why. Have a big enough why. You know, yes, it's my family and everything else, but it should be. Make a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, the charity have already said to me, you know, that when I was out there this year, they went, Paul, you know, I'm sure in a few years we're going to have a massive statue out here with you. And I'm like, whatever, I'm not, I'm not bothered about that. You know, what I want to know is that we've gone from six to 8,000 people, kids that we've saved, to 20, 30, 40, 50, even a million kids. You know, I'm only 38. I've got another, hopefully, 30, 40, 50 years on this planet. I can make a huge difference to those kids. Um, and that's my why. That's what gets me out of bed every day. So, yeah, I'm very grateful that I'm in a position to do that. I love it. 
you're leaving your imprint, your legacy behind. I love yeah, it. Definitely, it's definitely. Fun. It's you know, we, we've got to take advantage of the online world, haven't we? Yes. You know, and it's it's amazing what we can do with it. So yeah, take advantage of it, guys. Absolutely. Very cool. I'm gonna wrap up. Thank you so much, Paul, for having no problem. Thank you. sharing all of your wisdom. But more importantly, if anything, I want our listeners to take away the fact that his journey was twist turns, a roller coaster ride. It was a maze, yeah. but he never gave up. No. That's the key thing. It's, you know, so exactly. many. And I, I have clients too, they're like, I want success tomorrow. Well, it doesn't always happen that way. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Exactly. Just keep getting back up. Just keep, keep going, man. Keep going. You know, even when we had a job, we used to get knockbacks. Just keep going. That's right. You know? exactly. I'm, a lot, I'm a lot grayer now than I was eight years ago. <laughs> um, you know, but that's life. You know, it's right. even, even when you're successful, you know, what is success? Because we class success as here, but then when we get there, we want more. You know, so right. what is success? You know, right. it, so we're going to get hurdles constantly. Just keep going. You know, if you believe in what you're doing, it's, it's just going to be fun. You know, it's not a job, is it? We're sat here you know, thousands of miles away, um, you know, talking. And this is business, yep. you know? Exactly. This it's is amazing. fun for me. This is fun, exactly, you know, this is amazing. So, yeah, just enjoy it, guys. You know, take the, take the highs with the lows. Um, right. Just enjoy it, man, because it really right. is worth it. Yep, there'll be good days. There'll be bad days, but yeah, it's all definitely. worth it. Like you said, if your why is big enough, it'll carry yeah. you through the bad days. Yeah, like exactly. I know what the finish line looks like. I gotta keep going. Definitely, keep definitely. Going. Well, I mean, there's God. I could go on forever, but for the last <laughs> one, I'll shut up in a minute. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> people, if people come to me and they say that they want to set up a business. I always say to them, well, here's here's what to do. Then write down free hobbies, free interests, and free life experiences. Right? There's nine potential businesses. <laughs> That, narrow those nine down to three things, okay? Those three things that get you excited, all right? Then look at those three things and look at one of them, the one, excuse me, the one that's going to get you out of bed in the morning, the one that's going to get that excitement, it's going to give you butterflies, it's going to give you, you know, it's going to give you goosebumps. Every time I talk about India, I get goosebumps, I could cry, and mm -hmm. that's my voice. So that one thing, okay, that makes you emotional, that gets you excited, that makes you just go all gooey, there's your business because that's your passion. Now go and do it. You can create products about it, information products, CDs, DV, audio, ebooks, whatever. That's your business. That's what you want to do. Too many people get involved with businesses um, which are not passionate about. They do it for the sake of doing it. Don't let that be you because it will come across right. in your marketing. It will come across in everything you do. Be business. Very be true. passionate about what you do. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. We can feel that energy. Yeah. Um, no matter how you how great you think you are at wording your copy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But I really should shut up now. Like this is gonna be the longest episode that you've got on here. <laughs> it's all good. Great content, very uh, inspirational. So thank you so much. I'm gonna let our listeners go and I will embed, of course, they've got links to Paul and everything, his content and all yeah, well, right yeah. in the body of this email and video. So awesome. wonderful having you. Thank you thank so you much, Paul. So much. Thank you. Bye. Cheers, Gary. Bye. Take care. Love to you Bye. all. Yes. Bye-bye.